Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from WX Risk here in Central Virginia, uh, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, and the captain of catastrophe, and all-around evil scientist. And uh, this special edition of This Week in Weather, on this uh, late uh, January 27, we're going to be talking about the potential of a significant major nor'easter, and winter storm here and then looking at the pattern in February. So a lot to talk about. Let's get right to it. So uh, there's a picture of my smiling face from Richmond, Virginia. And you can see my e emails there, the Twitter page and the Facebook page. Our topics, like I said, January 31 or February 1 uh, are uh, <coughs> major events here. And now before we get to that, we are going to talk briefly. I'm also going to talk about February, the current event. Now, this was uh, the one happening tonight. That is to say, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Now, they'll start out here with this image. Now, the one on the left is the GFS model, and you can see this is um, this came out uh, on Tuesday. Uh, I guess that'd be yeah, about uh, 12 o'clock midnight, 12:30 in the morning on Tuesday. So it was the Zero Z Tuesday GFS run, and you can see it had a huge area of significant snow across uh, you know southern uh, North Carolina, uh, southern portions of Virginia, along the Virginia North Carolina border, really. And then uh, good snow into Hampton Roads, uh, three or four inches there, and then pretty significant snows here in portions of uh, north central, the northeast North Carolina, and then, you know, uh, three to six inch snows in southwest Virginia up to Roanoke. Now, there is the British model on the right hand side. You can see what the differences have been. So the GFS is going you know, to consistently overdone this. It's had problems with the last several storms. It's not performing all that well. At the same time, this was the European model. To show you how well it's performing and again this is a more realistic solution than the uh, british model you can see that light gray area let me get my marker so you can see what i'm talking about here this light gray stuff this is one inch you can see that's the one inch snow band and then when you get to the, the this color right here is one to two inches so that's two inches just south of richmond and then you have two inches or so in you know southeast virginia interior hampton roads northeast north carolina and two inches here and this is blue stuff is four inches so, uh, yeah, you know, that's a pretty reasonable looking map. The uh, one inch line goes up too close to Charlottesville and then into uh, maybe just to the around Fredericksburg, just to the south of Fredericksburg, something like that. A very reasonable looking solution. And the European has been very consistent with that. It hasn't had these big snows that the GFS was showing uh, over the last few runs. Uh, this here is uh, the um, some evening data. And uh, uh, the one here in the upper right in the upper right corner this was the uh, NAM here, which came out on this Wednesday afternoon. And you can see it's actually picked up the snow mounts a little bit. Um, you, you know, it's so, uh, you can compare that to the previous run. So this run here, this one right here, this was uh, uh, early this morning. This is Wednesday morning. Okay, the Wednesday 0Z zero zero run. See this? Sorry about the bad writing, but, you know, what are you going to do? Now, this here is the 18Z run. This is the 18Z run. So look at the huge difference between this and this. This morning, NAM had nothing. Nothing. Not even North Carolina. Now, look at the difference, the 18Z. I mean, that's a huge difference, folks. You know, and thank God this system is not coming north. Or, you know, if you like snow, that's it's, it's unfortunate that's not coming north. But look at the difference. You know, that purple stuff is now five or six inches along the Virginia North Carolina border. It's got three to four inches in Hampton Roads and Elizabeth City and Greensboro. It's got a couple of inches in down towards Raleigh. And then you've got your nice snow in southwest Virginia. Uh, and you can see the edge of the snow line, Charlottesville north of Richmond, maybe uh, Ashland, and then Richmond an inch and a half, Petersburg two inches. So very, very different between the two. I mean, that's a huge difference here, folks. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you get these last minute jumps. It makes the weather forecasting just that much harder. Uh, fortunately, uh, my last uh, call, last guess map, I should have made it last call. I didn't. So somebody sue me. Um, this was, as you can see, this is as of this morning here, this morning, uh, on this Wednesday morning, I did have this uh, this general idea. You can see it quite clearly um, in in uh, the you know the the, uh, the snow running in a northwest to southeast orientation. The pockets of good snow here and here, uh, some decent snow south of Richmond. So this is all in all fairly close to what this map is looking like here, in the upper right, and they're pretty close to what the uh, you know the European was showing here, and to lesser degree the UK met. So uh, I'm, that's working out pretty well. 
All right, uh, let's go on to this next event. Let's take a look at our teleconnections. That's very important in determining what the atmosphere looks like, what the pattern looks like going into it. So these are our four teleconnections, the EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, the PNA, the Pacific North American pattern, the AO, the Arctic Oscillation, and the NAO, North American Oscillation, or the Greenland block. So ideally, to see a significant East Coast snowstorm, which is sex, or MEX, major East Coast snowstorm, or HEX, historic East Coast snowstorm, you want to see the, the, this combination here, which I uh, have here. You want to see the EPO negative, the PNA positive, the Atlantic, you want to be negative, the AO, and the NAO. That's what you ideally want to see when you're looking for snowstorms. Now, here's the Atlantic side, and you can see that right now, um, as we go into this event for this weekend, all we're right here. So this here is the NAO, we're negative, and this here is the Arctic Oscillation. You can see that here, and we're negative there. Notice it stays negative all the way through mid-February in both of these. You can see that all the way through mid-February. So that's the good news for the extended outlook. We'll get to that later. Now this here is the uh, Pacific side. Oops, let me call it up there. And you can see that the PNA is not ideal. The PNA is negative because the big trough on the West Coast, California is getting slammed with these big storms. You may have seen news information about it on the Weather Channel or different websites talking about these big storms hitting the West Coast. That's why, because you have this huge trough on the West Coast bringing the storms into California. There's the West Coast bringing the storms in like that. Here's the uh, EPO. Uh, it's right now, it's slightly almost close to neutral. It jumps up to positive and goes to know drops back down to neutral again so the pacific side is not favorable but the atlantic side is and that places some restrictions on the pattern but because you have such extremely strong uh, uh greenland blocking and arctic oscillations uh, we are kind of in the ball game here for something to happen so this is what happens on thursday there's the storm for tonight tomorrow morning leaving the coast and with the key point here is look at the north winds look at the black lines here look at these lines coming down like this pulling the cold air in. see that so it floods the east coast with really cold air there's a nice arctic high i don't know if you can see it i'm highlighted for you right here 1044 millibars right there coming in behind it so thursday friday windy and cold look at the 850 temperatures coming in for the weekend the 0850 line is uh, that light blue and green line right here. You can see it. It's way down by in South Carolina. So it's mighty cold. The cold air is, air is coming south. And if, uh, that's going to you know dominate the pattern going into the weekend. Um, here we can see that what happens now is go beyond this. So uh, make sure I got my slides in the right order here. I think I do. Yeah. And uh, so uh, here we can see uh, the energy from the West Coast here. You know, the, the big green blob, the trough here on the West Coast, this is the big storm system coming in for the West Coast. So there's one low pressure area here. There's another one here. So this whole thing is ejecting energy. So what happens is it undercuts the blocking pattern. Because of the block over, look at the dark, oops, look at the, um, I keep jumping around here. Sorry about that. I'm going to change my mouse here. Like a second. There we go. So look at the um, a huge uh, block here over, over uh, eastern Canada and Greenland. Uh, this is a very strong sign. Now, what's happened here is the block over Greenland, look what it's done. It's moved westward, and I've said this many times. When the block in Greenland goes into Quebec, Canada, that's a great signal for East Coast winter storms. You want to see that. The further west the block is, the better it is for East Coast storms. So this piece of energy gets ejected. You see that? It comes out of the west coast trough and goes here. Now, if we did not have this block, if this was not there, this system would go up to the Great Lakes. No doubt about it. But because the block is there, the system has to go underneath it. Let me show you what happens in the next slide. This is now here Sunday morning. The upper low is over St. Louis, Missouri, between St. Louis and maybe south of Chicago. See that? There's the huge block. Again, very, very pronounced, extreme at the top of the charts. Look at the anomalies here. 400 decameters or higher above normal. There it is right there, extreme. And there's the upper low, which is going to cause a snowstorm. There you go. And here's our 50-50 low over southeastern Canada, keeping the cold high pressure in place. All three things are in place. All right. And even the trough access on the, you know, we're in the Midwest here. Look at this right here. Perfectly neutrally aligned. Ideal, ideal setup. Ideal. Okay. So this is what happens now. Monday afternoon, the close 500 low is bombing out. At, it did, the trough is deepening as it reaches the east coast, going underneath the blocking pattern. And the low pressure area begins to slow down along the east coast. And that produces the big storm. 
So this here is the GFS model. So let's take a look what's going on. This is the midday GFS model. Now, what's important to note here is that it's because the primary low is there and the coastal low is very, very weak. There's no closed isobar here. This is valid since Sunday 21Z. Look at the time up here, folks. Look at the time up there. This is important. 21Z, that's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, and because the primary low is so strong and the coastal low is so weak, you have southeast winds from Richmond all in New York City already, driving the warm air in. And as a result, the GFS has a very weak event. Here's the GFS. This is uh, Sunday morning at 1 a.m., the rain snow line, the Virginia-North Carolina border. There's the big low in near St. Louis. You can see that right here. Uh, there's the low right there in St. Louis. And here's the rain snow line. You can see it right here. Okay, now here's your big high pressure system to the north. So that's what the GFS is showing. Then, if we, uh, the next slide, this is now one o'clock in the afternoon. Look what it does. The rain snow line races northward. So six hours, 12 hours later, it's on the Pennsylvania, Maryland border. This has now gone to all rain. And the main primary low, there's no coastal low here at all, nothing. This is a little bit of kink in the isobars. The main low is up in Ohio. This is bullshit. This is what the GFS does with all the time overdoing the northern stream, not dealing with the southern jet stream very well, and that's what happens. Let me show you. Here's the GFS model. Again, Sunday morning, the rain snow line, which we saw on the Virginia-North Carolina border, okay, at 1 a.m., is now north of Richmond in Fredericksburg, racing towards D.C., it's, you know, you got some ice down in the Shenandoah Valley and snow in northwest Virginia and Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, but it doesn't last. It does not last, and it changes over. Look at that. By 1 o'clock on Sunday, it's on the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. See that in the upper upper left corner? Pennsylvania-Maryland border right there. And then it even goes north of that. And the coastal low, when it finally develops, is weak and way off the coast. It's just, it's just crap. It, I, I, I'm just so frustrated with this model. God, it drives me nuts. Okay, and here's the snow map for the GFS. Now, this is total snow, so this is deceptive. This is, uh, look, some of this is, is tonight's snow, which is GFS overdone. So you can see that all the snow in the GFS is in the interior. It's in the interior into New York City and there, that's fine. But uh, most of central and eastern Virginia, you get this warm air in southern New Jersey, D.C., Philadelphia, uh, Washington, uh, Richmond, you know, all the way down like that. It's all quickly goes over because you know the model just overdoes the primary low and has no coastal development at all let's take a look at the um uh the canadian much much colder model this is the same this is the 12z canadian from here on this wednesday afternoon there it is early one o'clock sunday morning it's already snowing in roanoke and lynchburg you can see that and now it here is in the bottom right this is 7 a.m sunday morning okay the rain snow line is on the virginia north carolina border moderate snow in much of Virginia in Richmond, Charlottesville, Roanoke, Lynchburg, uh, e eastern Panhandle of Virginia, Ohio is getting hammered with snow, western Maryland. You can see that northern Indiana, right? Fine. Now, here we go. Uh, upper left, that's uh, 1 o'clock on Sunday. 1 o'clock on Sunday, it's still snowing in Richmond, whereas the GFS had it on the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. See the, see the difference? See that? See the difference? Just total difference. Much, much colder. And the reason it's colder is because, look, it's got a coastal low by uh, Sunday evening, 7 p.m., uh, early Monday morning. The low is already uh, dumped to the coast, and that's why. So that's the main difference. So it's much slower. It keeps the cold air in place. The winds turn out of the north. The warm air advection is not as strong, and that's what happens on the Canadian model. And then if you go beyond that, look what the Canadian model does. Again, it stalls it. This is in the upper left. This is valid Monday morning. Uh, on February 1, and you can see the lows here. Look, just off the Delmarva. See that? Now look where it is here. It actually retrogrades back towards Norfolk. You see that? And that drives the precipitation again. Heavy precipitation moves back into northern Virginia, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia. You see that? Down towards Charlottesville and headed back towards Richmond. Okay, because now you're getting a north wind, the cold air, which is just to the north and west of Richmond, up by Charlottesville and D.C., comes rushing back, and the, and the drizzle and rain changes back to snow on Monday midday on the Canadian model. So there you go. That's interesting. And then look at this. you got more wraparound. The low is still lingering off the coast. This is Tuesday morning. It's still there. So, you know, it's not heavy snow, but you definitely have a wraparound snow coming down from Boston all the way to New York, to Philly, to Baltimore, to maybe Charlottesville, and, and down towards Richmond. <laughs> not too shabby, Abby. I mean, hell yeah. 
that's that's a nice looking storm and the canadian snow map pff, there you go okay it's not a monster gigantic snowstorm but you can see there's a lot of areas over 10 inches of snow here this is a pretty nice snowstorm for everybody from new york city down to the north carolina border even uh hickory may get decent snow out of northwest north carolina you know it's a nice snowstorm for everybody i mean no complaints boys and girls i can even enlarge this a little bit you want to see it in more detail look at that Okay, now some of the, again, is because of wraparound snow. You see the heavy snow on the Jersey coast there, 15 to 18 inches of snow. You're getting wraparound, pulling the moisture into the cold air. So you're getting locally heavier snow amounts. All right, let's go beyond that. Now, this here is last night's European, okay? So let me point this out again. Figure right this. So this is the 0 run, okay? 0 Wednesday. This is early this morning. And the European was going bonkers with a historic snowstorm again. Very nice snow here from D.C. into North Carolina. I mean, six inches in Raleigh. Look at that. And then um, a big snow in southwest Virginia. And then 14 inches, 15 inches in Richmond, if you believe that, Fredericksburg. Uh, and then, um, you know, this snow, uh, this map uh, only went out to Tuesday. There was additional snow up to New York City, but I only looked that up to this point here. I was dead tired. I had to go to sleep. So you could see what was going on. And look at the winds on this thing. My God. 45, 50 mile of winds on the coast. I mean, if this is right, you're talking the B word here. If this is right. If this is right. Okay, that's a big if. We don't know that yet. Now, you look at how the European was doing it. This is what the European was doing. You see the coastal low here. Now, this is in the upper left. This is valid uh, uh, Monday morning, 1 a.m. So, what happens is uh, you notice it's still snowing in Richmond and sleeting. That's way different from the GFS, which, you know, it's it's you know, all rain and 45 degrees, according to the GFS at that point. Remember, the rain snow line by Sunday, 1 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the evening is on the Pennsylvania-Maryland border on the 12Z GFS. And the 18Z GFS, I just looked at that piece of crap, and it's doing the same thing. But now, look what's going on. Look what happens here. So there's the low Monday morning, 1 a.m., and here's the low uh, at 7 a.m. You see, it's lingering on the northeast North Carolina coast. As a result, it keeps the winds out of the north in Richmond, and you stay mostly frozen precipitation. Snow and sleet mixed, and the D.C. is all heavy snow. Baltimore, uh, the Shenandoah Valley, Roanoke, Lynchburg, Charlottesville, all getting pounded. Uh, you know, it looks great. That's what the map is showing there. And then as we go beyond that, and then you can see here, the low is parked over Nags Head. And notice... Richmond is still frozen or snow and sleet. You're still getting wrap around there. Uh, this is uh, Monday evening, 7 p.m. I mean, this thing's still going on. And then, and that matches the Canadian and the British model. And there it is off the coast here, finally off the coast on Tuesday. I mean, Jesus, Joseph and Mary. Yeah, pretty long, impressive system. Now, this here is uh, the higher, this is the 12Z run. Okay, so now we're going to look at the 12Z run, see the difference. Okay, this is the 12Z run on Wednesday. You see this? Okay, 12Z Wednesday. All right. Sorry about the bad writing, but, you know, evil scientists don't write well. What can I tell you? OK, uh, so this here is uh, uh, this is a uh, valid um, Sunday, 1 a.m. This is Sunday, 1 a.m. here, right here on Sunday. OK, this is Sunday. You can see that big snow getting into Roanoke or just west of Roanoke, southwest Virginia and the nice snow in Ohio, Chicago, Indianapolis. Uh, Cincinnati, there it goes. Now, the low it goes here, begin to see warm air push in this way, but look at the snow breaking down towards uh, the mountains of North Carolina and Asheville getting pounded. And you got the snow here at 7 a.m. in Richmond, approaching D.C. It's already snowing in Charlottesville. And, you know, it's expanding this way and this way. Very impressive looking system, and it's just beginning. Okay, so now this is uh, a, a Sunday at 1 o'clock. Again, in the upper left, look where the rain snow line is at Sunday at 1 o'clock on the Virginia, south of the Virginia, North Carolina border. That's not where the GFS has it, folks. The GFS had it here. Big, big difference. I'm, that's massive difference. Now, here's the coastal low forming there. There's your primary low here. And now this is a Sunday, 7 p.m. here. The, sleet, the rain snow line, sleet line is in the Richmond metro area, okay, or just to the south of it. So this is all snow up in here. And there's the coastal low here. Okay, that's pretty much unchanged. Notice the primary low is in Kentucky. Notice, it. look at this, folks. Kentucky, not here, Kentucky. Big difference between that and the GFS. Now we go to uh, 
uh, Monday morning, 1 a.m., there's your coastal low on the coast. The primary low is dying out in Kentucky. It's still frozen precipitation in and close to Richmond, just to the north or west maybe. And the D.C. is getting pounded, Charlottesville, Shenandoah Valley, all getting mod light to moderate snow. Now we go to the bottom right image. This is Tuesday morning. Is that right? Uh... Uh, excuse me, Valley. Excuse me. This is Valley Monday morning, Monday morning, February first, on the bottom right. Um, yeah, Monday morning, Monday morning, February first. There, you can see the low is on the again on the North Carolina coast. Now it's pushed things a little further to the north of Richmond, but all this is now moderate snow in here. So you're getting snow and snap around, wrap around here in Ohio portions of Pennsylvania. So that's pretty impressive. And then um, we go to this image, which is let me bring it up a little bit. Now this is. Uh, Monday evening, 7 p.m. Now the low this time, notice where the difference is. The, the European has the low, instead of being here, has it over Norfolk. You see that? Now the winds turn around to the north, but that drives the rain snow line a little further to the north. So, But it still comes back. You can see it's still coming back. The cold there is coming. Uh, the winds turn out of the north in Richmond, and it brings the precipitation back to frozen and sleet and freezing rain. Meanwhile, it's still getting heavy snow in D.C. and Baltimore and Philly and Charlottesville and Shenandoah Valley and so on, and Lynchburg and so on and so forth. Light to moderate snow in Roanoke and West Virginia. You can see that. And then, it, But it even continues. This thing it still isn't done yet. Now, this is Tuesday, 1 o'clock in the morning in the upper left. Look where the low is. The low is still parked there. So what's important here is that all these models are showing this system stalling on Monday, somewhere along the southeast Virginia or North, northeast North Carolina coast. The Canadian model shows it. The European model shows it. The British model shows it. The last two or three runs, all of them. They all show that. Meanwhile, you're still getting, this is Tuesday morning, 1 o'clock. See that? 1 a.m. Look at the snow still falling out here. Look at this. Wrapping around back into D.C. and Leesburg and, and, and the Shenandoah Valley and the Virginia Piedmont and going back into Richmond. Now, finally, the low pulls away here by Tuesday afternoon, and now New, New Pennsylvania and New England are getting pounded as the low begins to crawl its way up the coast. See that? Begins to crawl its way up the coast. This low is not going out to sea, according to the European. So New England gets pounded. So that's great news for New York and, and southeast uh, New York and, and snow lovers in New England and Pennsylvania and New York City and so on and so forth. And there's your snow map. Very reasonable. Now, what's going on in Richmond for my Richmond friends here, and of course I'm partial to Richmond, is that the, because the lows on the coast are a little bit, the snow mounts drop a little bit. But the, look at the difference. A little shift of the snow line is huge. Look at the difference. Just to the west of Richmond, you have 8 to 10 inches. 12 inches. See that? That's 8 to 10. So a difference of 30 miles. Big difference. That could easily shift back to the, this is not at all, so don't freak out over that, folks. Uh, meanwhile, look at the big snows in, north, in D.C., just to the west, in the Virginia Piedmont and the Shenandoah Valley. Widespread 8 to 20 inches in all this area. Widespread. Maybe, uh, yeah, 10 to 20 inches. I mean, that's a, this is a significant snowstorm. It's not historic, but it's definitely a major snow, East Coast snowstorm, if that's correct. This is the European Ensemble. There you go. Very consistent. Anywhere from 4 to 8 in Central Virginia. You got 6 to 12 in the Valley, up into uh, Eastern Martinsburg, Winchester, uh, 8 to 10 in D.C., something like that, up to Philly, and then up into New England. Classic, nice-looking, significant snowstorm. This is more realistic than, than um, let's say, this, but... This is possible. This is not as extreme. We're not seeing 20 or 25 inches here. This is a very likely possible snowfall event, given this pattern. And uh, here you can even see the Uke Met. We can look at that briefly. And you can see here the Uke Met um, has one low and then the other one jumping to the coast. So And then a, one big consolidated low here by Monday afternoon off the coast. And as a result, the, uh, the British model is showing a very reasonable snowfall. It's not as extreme as the European, but that's very possible very possible uh, that's i think that's a little on the low side but that's that's if you want a nice compromise you could go with that and then beyond that what happens beyond this pattern well i do want to show, show you some things this here is the mjo and you notice the european and the gfs here by the time we get to the february 10th or, or, or 11th you can see that both of these features there it is in phase seven about to move into phase eight on the gfs and the european and indeed the uh, extended um, mjo does show it going into phase eight here in the middle of February and then phase one uh, in early March. And those are big, cold, snowy weather pattern indicators 
uh, for the eastern United States. When you're in the winter months of phase eight and phase one, that's lock them and load them, boys and girls. And if we look at the extended stuff, we can see what happens. Now, after this event here on Monday, blows off the coast on Tuesday, the big energy of the west coast ejects an enormous uh, low pressure area from here. You can see it goes into uh, uh, the Midwest becomes a blizzard probably for uh, the upper Midwest here. There's the block. So now, the, interestingly enough, which I don't understand, the models are taking this thing into the block. And the laws of physics say, even though the low is here, you see that the European ensemble mean, this low should be here. So I'm not sure why it's taking into the block. I'm having a problem with that. In any event, even if that's true, we warm up for a day or two. Okay, then the big cold front comes through and a nice strong ridge develops the West Coast, dumping in a fresh supply of cold air as we go into February. And then here we have February 9th. Look at the block still holding on to Greenland. Boy, this thing is, does not want to go away. This thing is latched on here like a dog on a bone. And uh, there's the polar vortex. You have a, a trough on the West Coast and a weak ridge here. So low pressure is going to be tracking in this direction. And depending on how much cold air we get in this way, uh, we could have winter weather events coming like that in February. And then even beyond that, the CFS is really aggressive. Let me, oops, let me clear this out. This is week two and week three. Look at the ridge developing on the west coast and the block. I mean, wow, that's an impressive looking pattern. That is cold and that is stormy in the middle of Fe Fe February here, the middle of February. And then you can even see it here. This is the CFS Weekly from uh, NWS, the Climate Prediction Center. This is week three, February 10 to 16, February 17 to 23rd. So week three, look at the temperatures here, way below normal. The precip is dry for the Midwest and New England, but not, I'll clear that out, not Virginia, not Maryland, not North Carolina. That's pretty active. And then this year, the temperature is still very, very cold in uh, mid-February here. A new Arctic blast coming out of Canada. You can clearly see that. And look at the above normal precipitation here. So uh, this is not a one-shot deal, looks like, with this storm here for Sunday, Monday. Um, you know, February has got some promise. And if we go into phase eight and phase one in February, yeah, February, March is going to end up being pretty decent, which is what my entire winter forecast was saying. The second half of the winter is when it's going to happen. We'll see. Now, if we could just get the La Nina to weaken a little bit, things will really take off. This is meteorologist D.T. and Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Twitter page and over on the Facebook page. Thanks for stopping by and watching the video.